Hello, welcome to the second Binghamton University Anime Club podcast. Uh, my name is Craig Speck. My name is Robert Reese. I am your glorious lord and dictator, Benjamin Carl Forstrom Cohen. Can't make up all of that. <laughs> my name is Finney and Dukuna. So uh, on this episode, it's uh, it's October, so it's of course Halloween time. We're going to be talking about our favorite spooky stuff and uh, the, the most quality, scary anime. But uh, the fall season of anime also just started, so I think we're going to uh, start up by talking about that. So if there's any fall shows anyone's been watching that they want to talk about. A Sister's All You Need. Ah, that's a good one because it's both scary and fall anime. <laughs> Please tell us about this masterpiece. Um, well, this masterpiece... Uh, starts off with probably one of the most unique and thought-provoking <laughs> 90 seconds of an anime you can ever have. Although, I will warn people, like, real talk, though, the 90, first 90 seconds is probably one of the most traumatizing 90 seconds you'll like, ever experience. It's in yeah, my it's yeah, like, in a beautiful kind of way. No, honestly, for the first 30 seconds of it, I was like, wait, is this the actual show? And then I was like, wait a minute, no, the animation doesn't look like it would be. And I was honestly concerned that that was going to be the whole show. So I, I, I was given the trigger warning by Rob, thank you, Jesus, You're before welcome. the show. So that is our trigger warning to all of you who want to go on the glorious adventure of watching A Sister's All You Need. But, um... So my real, so my MVP VP pick of this um, season is currently a girl's last tour. I feel like it's not like super hyped, but I feel like it should be for two reasons. One, it's about like two cutesy girls who are kind of adorable. But two, I. Th- Two, I think that the setting is probably one of the most interesting in terms of both where it takes place and the, the animation style. So the animation style is basically these, basically about these two cutesy girls who have these really round faces that aren't very um, kind of, uh, there's not a lot of really features to them. They're kind of almost bland. But I feel like that actually works really well because the setting in the background is meticulously detailed and they just are going through these sprawling settings um, that are just basically laid waste because I actually, I forgot to say this, but the overall story is basically about two two girls who are just going through a post-apocalyptic world and just kind of strolling around so the fact that like so i feel like just i was just kind of blown away by these kind of like winter like what first at first winter settings where they're just going through blizzards and like the snow is just so real and like the like objects in the background are very detailed like even through like a snowy blizzard and then um and other settings that they will go to later but Overall, I was just really impressed. Like, but yeah, I'm not sure if anyone else has seen it. Yeah, know, like, about it. Everyone really hypes this show up, and it just sounds really boring. Like, I, I, I don't right, know. So it just it, doesn't it, sound like my kind of thing. It's honestly, it's sound. It's like those shows seem to be the most interesting. Like, they sound boring on the surface, but they somehow find a way to make it interesting. I'm guessing. Like, yeah, you could to I, that. I I would definitely agree that, but it's also like so Mushishi in a lot of ways is kind of boring if you just like but i feel like girls last tour gives gives an actually very similar feel to M- mushishi slash made in abyss where it's like kind of just kids you know strolling around not doing a lot but they do kind of tackle some pretty interesting questions questions as well, they go along are they like the only two characters in it or do they meet other people um i mean i will say so like, yes, there is another person that they do meet, but meeting p- people and living things are very rare. For instance, in episode two, they find a fish and they kind of freak out because they're like, what is that? <laughs> like, they, you know, they, they don't. So like seeing living things that aren't human 
is like pretty for is like extremely foreign and like other human beings is also very foreign so it is like very different society and what's cool is that they are hinting at some of the structure of the society as if you go along so it kind of keeps you kind of hooked by them slowly revealing more and more about the kind of the world which they are traversing. It sounds a lot like the book The Road by Cormac McCarthy. Yes. But I, I, didn't, I didn't like that book. <laughs> so, so the main difference I would say about The Road, and so for instance, if everyone knows, to give a short synopsis about The Road, The Road is about a father and a son who live in a post of pop, with that word a post-apocalyptic world that word is and they, so they just follow this road and no but like <laughs> try also, not to die yeah it's also like super animal. depressing because all they eat is canned food or other humans because that is basically what everyone is like subjected to so it's one of the basically the one of the most depressing books of all time but what's interesting is it takes a super depressing setting and then there's just two girls kind of being cutesy and like trying to traverse this world so they do face hardships but at the same time it almost has an uplifting feeling because it's like man these two girls are like going through like the apocalypse well i just need to do a paper by like next thursday like i can get through this like it just (laughs) makes me feel like damn but you know what i mean unlike the road where it's just like Nice. Life is the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> you will all die and suffer horribly. So I feel like it, even though it, it has basically the same setting as the road, it has different messages, which I think is good. And I think you're forgetting something very important, that there is dabbing in yes. the ending theme. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I actually don't, like whenever the ending thing comes on, I generally don't watch the animation. I always like go to a different tab and just listen to the music. So it's disappointing. They, they dab. Isn't yeah, it? they dab. <laughs> yeah. So it's the dab. best anime ever made now, like confirmed. If you yeah, so if one likes dabbing <laughs> and is a good and I nerd and watches Pingu, you also so, like that one comes in. Uh, is Pingu dab? I think Girls Last Tour is better. So Pingu does not dab. Ooh, ooh, those are fighting words. Deal breaker. So, who else? But has yeah, one? overall, I would say it's very interesting. Well, it's not. It might not. So, I will say it might not be your anime. But if you watch the first episode, I think you'll know real quick if it is or not. So, who else has a show they want to go? Yeah. Next, I guess. All right. Uh, yeah. All right, so uh, when the show that I think is kind of underrated, but it's kind of early to tell, is uh, Children of the Whales. Oh, Which I want to see that. Heard of I think that. Netflix got it, so I'm like, oh, Netflix got it. I think so. That's I was, I, I was it. like, <laughs> just like typing the into Netflix one day, and that came up as like one of the the shows. Like it's coming soon. And I'm like, oh, oh cool. Damn. So, <laughs> yeah, long story short, it's basically like Shinsekai Yori. It, it has oh. a lot of Shinsekai Yori vibes. It's uh, essentially post-apocalyptic, and you're in this kind of isolated setting where you have no idea what happened before. Unlike Shinsekai, where you know that like uh, a few psychokinetic people came and then uh, society went after that, you have no idea when in time this occurs. So you're only isolated to essentially this like rock ship in a way, and the people there also have uh, like magical powers that they can control, and it starts off kind of isolated, but I don't want to spoil it. Uh, but by episode three, it kind of flips everything on its head. And sh- essentially, shit hits the fan. <laughs> That's the <laughs> best way to describe it. Excuse the language. And uh, that's all I have to say. It's like mysterious. You don't know what a lot of, what, of what's going on, but what does go on, it's really good. And it could potentially be interesting if they do it the right way. It could be interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard just, to tell. Yeah, it's hard to tell because it, it, it can definitely go down a wrong path. And it's they've, what they've done so far is good. But if it, it can mess it up, I really don't want to spoil, it, spoil anything. So that's pretty much the, that's pretty much the best synopsis I can give. I feel like that's like basically the epitome of every trash anime where it's like, yes. man, it could go somewhere. Wait, but... I, I have a show just like that. All right. So, oh, so I don't know if anyone's seen King's Game yet. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. The It's like 
all these kids get like a, a text they're like you have to do this or else you're gonna die in the next 24 hours and all the kids and like the main character like apparently he did this before at his old high school so he's like guys we gotta do this and they're like you, you, you're being silly what are you talking about and then like half the class just dies they're like oh my god it's real and i'm like this is this is amazingly bad it's like everything you want about crap just like in one show and like it's actually not awful, which is good, but it's just some it's something just edge. It, it does some things good, but a lot of other things, like the way the characters react to certain uh, certain situations, like one of the girls, she ends up just snapping almost for no reason. You have no idea why she snapped, she just ended up snapping and becoming a psychotic, you know. Like how do I say she she turns she, into, into yandere or, or yeah. whatever yeah. almost yeah she's like perfectly fine like almost like perfectly normal she just snaps one minute and becomes like a yandere it's out just, of thin air it's just like predictable in that you can tell like the characters almost know that something's about to go wrong so they snap even though there's no way that they would have known that there's like an eerie sense it's like the characters know they're in a show like this and it's weird is it like a, so is it like do do they like portray in like an entertaining way kind of it's self-aware no uh, that's no. the problem it acts like the characters know what's about to happen but like it's in a badly written kind of way like it's very cheesy but it's honestly it's fun like just something to watch that's really good wait is it one of those things mm-hmm. where like the like the, the, the main protagonist guy because considering he's already um been through like this whole ordeal is he like some like omnipotent guy where he's just like I know what's gonna come next he's gonna do this not really really. I mean he he could be we have no idea what could happen I hope they don't do that but uh, he he just sort of what the show really mostly does which kind of annoys me in a way is that it mainly the episodes so far have been mainly flashbacks from the last Kings game with his old classmates but the problem is that's been majority of the episodes and we haven't seen much of the newer cast so and I'm kind of wondering why they didn't just do that the first Kings yeah, game. Yeah, well, apparently it's like based on a video game, and this yeah, is the sequel say. is what they've adapted. It sounds so like... that the first game is just the flashbacks. So like, why didn't they just? Because yeah, I'm honestly the enjoying the game. flashbacks. Like, I wish they kind of just stuck yeah, with that. Yeah, like I don't understand why they chose to do it. I like, feel like it explains a lot because it just sounds like a Danganronpa ripoff. Honestly. That's what I was. It, yeah, it is. That's what it is. is. Yeah, like Danganronpa is fun because it's like a small group of characters and it's like extreme and over the top but this is just kind of like yeah Dangarab is like weird. self-aware about it like which yeah. is why it takes the same thing problems that aren't seen King's Game so I can't say it's not nothing <laughs> I'm but... gonna watch it though <laughs> like, I wanna watch it now you should like it's I don't know it's not awful it's just dumb <laughs> I mean dumb is good dumb is good I mean speaking well my favorite dumb anime of this season is uh is it it's the one with the 12 Zodiac characters. Juni Taizen. Yeah, Juni Taizen. Like, that show, like, kind of, it reminds me a lot. It kind of reminds me of what I kind of wish Drifters was. Yeah. In that it's just basically violence. There's yeah. not a lot of humor. No, it's, it's There's good, dumb. very little story. Oh, it's just murder. Yeah. It's, it's basically it's just murder. murder. It's like what you want Drifters and Fate Zero to be. Like what? It's not exactly. Why would you want Fate Zero to be violent? Like I mean, it no. Is, like, like when I went when I went into watching like Fate Zero, I was like, oh boy, it's just gonna be like people fighting, and it's gonna be cool characters and cool animation and cool battles, and that's it. But then Fate Zero is just really slow, and it's like this is my motivation to do everything. These are my morals. Really? Blah blah yeah. blah. I, yeah, I haven't seen Fate Zero. I it's so it more, boring. I, no. On the outside, I was like, oh, I thought it was like more action. No, really? no it's, it's so not slow. Very but it's, this is cool. Yeah. Like and people I, die. And I feel like it. I be honest. So I have it as a two on my anime list. I mean, so. it was, you said it was actually a five, though. <laughs> I mean, it's because you, you. I think both of you just went in misunderstanding what Fate Zero really was, and because of that, you did were probably got a lot less. Of it. I mean, I that is true, that. but still, but like, I also you, that, like, that just disappoints me. Like, how many hours have you spent playing? the uh night. Yeah, yeah you're a fate fanboy i mean yeah i mean my thing is i i think phase zero is like much better than stay night but i have seen it after so i do have that same yeah and to answer probably like 90 i don't know <laughs> yeah, i don't know fate zero just like i went in and i saw i i don't know it's just like even looking back when i try to like rewatch clips or whatever or watch reviews of it i just i don't like the slow 
Thing morals, the think whole thing, slow. talking about ideals. Like, I just, that's unnecessary. Okay. If I want to watch a death game show, then I want something like this. I find that where super it's just funny, violent. actually. Because <laughs> you're complaining about something that I know this isn't what Jimmy Tyson is, but it's written by, what's the guy's name? Lucio Reason. Who's famously known for making Bakem on a God for you, but yeah, they spend is, uh, the entirety of the show talking just, about yeah. ideals and nothing else, and it's fucking boring. But yeah. I love Fade Zero and not Bakem on a God for you, so who knows? <laughs> I mean, I will say, considering I'm up to date, there are, they do get more ideally oh, no. a little <laughs> bit as they progress, but it's also not super bad because it was after like a couple of episodes of just like sheer violence. So you're like, all right, we could like, like take a nice down. tea break. <laughs> well, you know? yeah. I, I've only seen the first episode and what I really liked was how little information we knew about anyone and anything. Like, I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be, like, realistic violence, but then all of a sudden, one character reveals he has magic, and it was just really cool. Like, you you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, like, like just, it, yeah. and, like, that, and that actually, like, like part, like, going, because I'm up to date, like, that kind of, sur- like, surprise of, like, oh, this character can do this is, yeah. like, constant. It's great. So, like, because like, it only, because it's also interesting because there's 12 characters, and unlike, for instance, Fade Zero, which tries to, like, kind of look at them all almost at the same time this one just basically like each episode is so far is dedicated to one character and it's from one character's perspective hmm. so it kind of makes it interesting in that sense because you're not like flooded with all these different perspectives instead you're like you get a couple and you're trying to like figure out the bigger picture i feel like we need to cut off fate zero because i yeah. think they're not, yeah. not at all similar in the slightest other than battle, battle royale yeah. but like that's pretty general yeah, it's just, it's a cool show. <laughs> yeah, I need to see it. It's fun. We're just like shitting on your face. Though. I know. You <laughs> triggered me, man. Uh, well, what else is cool this season? Uh, uh, Kekka Sensen and Beyond. Oh, Blood Blockade yeah. Battlefront and Beyond. That's, so, a, that's a good sequel. I dropped season one. Could I watch season two? No. 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 It's, it's like a direct continuation. Like... But, like, I really paid attention only half the time to season one because it was just too fast and too complicated. But based off the first episode for this season, they're slowing things down and actually having real stories in their episodes. So it I makes mean, a lot more sense and it's a lot cooler. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I agree. But as I think, I just think it's very, like, person to person, whether or not that's a good or bad thing. Because I've seen a lot of people complain about the slower direction in season two because a lot of the appeal to some people in season one is just how fast it is. How you're constantly getting plot points, character moments, and it's basically just spitting them out to you like moment by moment. So I don't know. So, it's it's fun. <laughs> I, I don't know. Honestly, I think they're both great in their own way. It's just kind of a bit weird. Like I kind of wish they stayed consistent in style between the two seasons. But I think what like stylistically, everything else is similar. Like yeah, all the characters I mean, have like, right. really over the top attacks that are just really cool. I guess I don't mean style I mean pacing more. So yeah, that's what I really mean. That's fair. I don't know. I like the slow down pacing and that we actually get to understand the characters. Yeah, I'll be honest. I, as I said, I dropped the first season is because like I could not handle that fast pace. It was like, wow, things are happening so quick. I don't know what's going on. I think I'm gonna drop this. Like it, it just got to a point where it's just like I don't understand what's going on. And I think they want me to, so I'm just gonna drop it. <laughs> it's interesting because apparently if you read the manga, like it's nothing like that. It's pretty slow. Like not slow, but like. Normal pace, pace you would expect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, one, two last shows I quickly want to talk about. I've never seen any of the Garo anime, but the new oh, really? one. I saw the first episode. It was really cool. Garo is fucking awesome. I, I'm a big fan of the other Garo. Anime. Like the live action or the not the live oh, action, yeah. like but like the I forget which one it was called. The, the first Garo animated series. I think it was just called like Garo. I think it was literally just called Garo, but like that one was. I think it was extremely underrated. I've heard and that. It, it's great seeing a new Garo series, which really I feel like, despite being extremely different in like, not maybe not so much tone, but in setting like plot. Despite it, it really has, like, a lot of the same hooks, I feel. Yeah, it's, like, it's just cool watching this random guy ride around on a motorcycle, fighting demons, like, just transforming into, like, a whatever they transform yeah, into. Like the it's weird. just cool. There's just, what I really like about this season is there's a lot of just cool action shows, and that's what I like. And it's nice to have stuff like that. Like, another one is, it's really weird, but it's called Infinity Force. And it's about all the uh, all the old, what are they called, Tatsunoko heroes, like Gachamon, Tekaman, uh, Kashin, and 
what, some other guy. They're all like thrown into one dimension and they all have to, to fight some evil. And it's like really cheesy, but like it looks really pretty sometimes. It's just like action. <laughs> yeah, something I will say like is just that this season's actually packed. Full yeah. of stuff. Like, I, like it's one of those things, like I think there's almost a good show for you no matter what height. Except yeah, maybe Moe. Yeah, there's should, not a lot. There's yeah, not a lot. No, there's there actually lot. is. Thank there God. actually is. All right, yeah. what is You mean, it? thank God. Moe is the like best Moe. job. I don't like It's just boring. I, I feel like a lot of people say that, but like, you, when you're a Moe connoisseur like me, you understand <laughs> what the real good shit is. But like, there actually is, because uh, there's Blendest, first off. Oh, uh, I heard that was oh, awful. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I heard it was Blend- just boring. Blendest, like, no, nah, I think it's, like, it's not a great show by any means, but like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's honestly just kind of funny and enjoyable, but like, it. It's not the type of thing you really go out of your way to watch. It's just kind of there. There is another Maui show, but I don't remember. Uh, I'll look now. Okay. There, well, there's Himoto Umaru Chao. Oh, that's not Maui. That's just trash. That's just trash. <laughs> 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 there's, there, there's Showbitch. The one oh, with my God. Not that's Showbitch. Show oh, that's so, so bad. All right. Can we so talk so about Showbitch? Uh, I don't even know what it's about. but like That name, though. They, yeah. Okay, I know what's about oh, because I actually watched it. I'm right, probably right. gonna drop it because it's just so bad. It's basically like your extreme etchy show, and uh, so what's it about? This generic main character. Uh, he asks his girl out, and she says yes, and she's like the top of the school. She's really the prettiest girl, you know, the common tr- yeah. common tropes there. Uh, but the thing, her like thing is that she's like really perverted. In a way, oh god, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's like perverted uh, and like I guess innocent in a way. Like she has a very perverted mind, but she's also kind of innocent. So she's a virgin, basically. Is that what you're trying to get at? Yeah. Like so, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then oh, and then she uh, then he has a si- then he no 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 it gets better it gets better he has a <laughs> sister that loves him. Oh. He has a childhood friend that also loves oh, him. Oh, I think we're cutting we're getting all the checks. And, then, and in and in like the poster, there's like. Four other girls that I have no clue are, are who they are, but there's like four other people still to go. So I don't know what the beats are gonna hit with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like I, I don't know what I expected going in, and I still don't know what it is. One of them has to be my personal favorite, the adoptive father sis, uh, oh, no. daughter relationship. No, no. no. ruined my life that. too many times. Do you want Do you want to talk about uh, Konohi? Konohana Kita and the other Moe show. I mean, I could because now I remember. Actually, I think that one's boring as shit. Like, I think Blendest is way better. <laughs> that nice. one's like. Well, there's there's also Love Live, but Love, oh, Love Live, yeah, Love Live is kind of. But I'm not watching that because I didn't finish the last season. Wait, but like, I thought Love Live isn't Love Live like it runs basically infinitely. Like, no, there's only. This like is Love seasons. Live Sunshine. Yeah, it is Love Live Sunshine. Sunshine. Yeah, there was a pretty big break between Love Live and uh, maybe not that big, but like it, it was. It, it's not like they continually make it twenty four seven. Is it better or worse than Idol? Wait, Master? there's there's an Idol, Idol Master. Was wait, wait, wait. There's an Idol Master male spinoff. This yeah, oh, yeah. I've been yeah. meaning to. People oh, tell me it's good. Is it? I mean, I think. I mean, if it's anything like the first Idol Master season, which I was very impressed by, like it's a very well produced, like. Surprisingly, some emotional stories put in. Gross. You haven't watched. Wait, have you watched Idol Master? No. I was gonna say like. Uh, it's just. It just. I've never boring. watched. I've never watched any Idol anime. Like, yeah. Like, all right. So I haven't either. My, but just, I know that the guy who writes Berserk does. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's <laughs> how you know it's good. Yeah. You know, that, that's why he never oh, writes chapters. He's addicted it's to Idol addicted Master. Addicted to Idol Master. Yeah. That's awful. Idol. It makes sense. Idol Master is yeah. like <laughs> from Berserk to Idols. Wow. I mean, I understand yeah. it. I love Berserk, and I, I mean, I don't love Idol Master, but I like Idol Master. I mean, my thing is, I actually really dislike Idols in general because I don't like the culture in Japan. But like, despite that, I've seen like I've seen Wake Up Girls, I've seen racist. Love Live, I've seen Idol Master. Ah, <laughs> no. uh, yes, definitely. All right. <laughs> Honestly, though, I feel like anyone who likes the Idol culture just should watch Perfect Blue and just have their life get wrecked. I mean, there's a more watch recent documentary Tom. about it. Uh, I mean, it's not a documentary, I know, which I is know, part of the reason like, why I think it's maybe yeah. not better, but like it can be. It's kind of entertaining and ruins your life, but also gives you morals at the same time. So it's like that. Nickel Para Ova, sorry, <laughs> I saw the trap. Oh yeah, I forgot. Wait, that's coming out this season. Apparently. Oh god. Uh, December. Yeah. Uh, the, oh, the cat girl made one. Oh. Wait. So one thing we haven't talked about. 
that all, which is probably like the biggest anime of the season. Ancient Magus Bride. Yeah, Ancient okay. Magus Bride. Uh, oh yeah, I, I, like, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So. so I'm, I guess I'm, am I the only one who's seen it? No, so I, I, I saw first two episodes. Yeah, I haven't seen the third one. So so far, initial reaction, okay, pretty good, but also like pretty slow. Like I feel like it's baiting us with a lot of different things, and it's just like. I mean, I, from what I hear, people, it's, it's just it's like soaking in atmosphere, right? Like, isn't that the appeal, though? I but so my problem with the whole that thing, in is that I actually think that, um, girls last tour atmosphere is actually like quite a bit seemed like honestly on a different level. But that but, one's like a negative. Well, not negative, but I mean it's like there's. I feel depressing. like there's difference between like magic atmosphere and like dead world atmosphere like i feel like different people are gonna want to watch each i mean at, what at, I, like atmosphere shows but what i will say is that like so like even though it's atmospheric it still focused he- like heavily on the characters that yeah makes yeah sense. yeah like yeah it's what i like is that yeah it gives enough time for like you kind of see the different sides of their characters and it doesn't brush over it it takes its time i kind of like the fact that it does take its time it doesn't rush anything and it, it the slow face the slow face kind of feel it kind of fits the it kind of fits the show because it's mainly revolving around two characters in the relationship and it's like slowly developing that. Yeah, I would say a big difference is that like they kind of are developing the relationship and where whereas in Girls Last Tour, like the relationship is kind of already there to begin with, and you and you do kind of learn it more about it as you go along, but it's actually I feel like mostly about like the yeah, like the yeah, actual atmosphere okay. and like, yeah I get setting. that because that, that kind of makes sense it's almost because the way you're saying the characters are really are like pretty bland compared to the environment it's kind of yeah. the art like the kind of the animators were saying that you should pay attention more to the surroundings than the actual characters themselves which show are you saying this for Angel uh, Magus Pride no, no uh, Girls uh, Girls, Girls Last Tour yeah Angel Magus Pride as as Bone Daddy which I don't know as I said oh, I didn't yeah. see it but it's Bone Daddy yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's really good. it's really pretty <laughs> I mean, I feel like I I will. The one thing, and part of the reason that I dis, one thing I dislike about my ancient Magus Bride is like the story is like pretty messed up from like a moral point of view. Because oh for yeah, you, for those of you who don't know, it's basically about. I, I forgot his name, but we'll just call him Bone Daddy. Yeah, that's his name. It's Bone, Bone Daddy. Daddy the Sorcerer. Just basically, so. Strolls up and buys a sleigh belly and slash this girl at a auction and just like you are my property now and I'm gonna make you my wife. Granted, it doesn't necessarily like push that narrative, but it still has like kind of almost undertones of that. It should be noted though that the main character was depressed and sold herself into slavery, but it's still yeah. like. I, mean, I was gonna pretty say disturbing. I, I, yeah. that the, I feel like the part that disturbed me because I was reading the synopsis, I was like, wait, so she sold herself into slavery because she was depressed. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know, maybe I have to watch it to understand that. It, it, she, like, at that point, she had, like, really low, like, self worth. It, it had more because, um, I try not to spoil it. She didn't, how do I say this without spoiling it? Well, I like, feel like because well, people it, people really didn't like her for a particular reason, or like just gave her the cold shoulder uh, throughout her whole life, and she had a lot of horrible stuff happen. And it's she at that point she's kind of she's kind of she's given up on living. Okay. Yeah, so they it's all, understand. They've also yeah. they've also I would also say I feel like they've alluded to that it's like only the tip of the iceberg too. Yes. Like it like there definitely seems to be like more going on. Like we basically all we feel like we know is that people didn't like her. And that she lived a pretty terrible life, but like, I feel like some of the more specific stuff like hasn't been disclosed. Yeah, they've been like slowly getting there, but they haven't fully revealed it yet, which is good. So we'll learn about that hopefully later. Mm -hmm. So any like last time fall shows slash shows we've been watching recently before we get on to our main topic? Um, I don't think anyone's seen it, but Black Clover is a thing that exists. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be the big show. No one cares. Like yeah. well, I, I don't know. Apparently, apparently, watching it. apparently it sucks. Oh well. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like the manga isn't that bad. Like I actually heard it's oh, pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah. But like, I heard that too. but it's also like 
Yeah, like poor man's Naruto. Oh, but yeah, read Naruto again. Yeah, come on. He equally <laughs> has <laughs> trans fairy tale. Like I, because everyone describes me as more generic fairy tale, which fairy tale is just more generic One Piece. So like. Yeah. So yeah, is One Piece that good? I think One, One Piece, Piece is, is pretty good. I think it's the best shonen. Like I think it's the best written shonen, but I still like Naruto better. I mean, that's fair. I, I think Nar I like since I've been rereading Naruto, I'm like, I understand it now why it was so big. But yeah. One Piece still beats it out because One Piece is just well written. Time. Yeah, it's like yeah. just Naruto's more fun. Yeah, Naruto One, I think One, like best fights. Like yeah, if One, you're in for fights, beats Yeah, it One Piece's power system just isn't as interesting to me. Uh, it can get very slow at times. There's some arcs that just last forever that are really boring. So, like, that's my problem with One Piece, whereas Naruto is just fun. See, my thing is just, I think, One Piece... Uh, we, don't, we don't need to get into the... One, 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 yeah. One, one, one. <laughs> no. I mean, that's cool. I mean, personally, I've actually been reading a lot of shoujo recently, even though, that, even though that's not <laughs> anime, but... Two things that I've... The two things that I've read recently, Kira Kano and Mars, have both been kind of earth-shattering to me, because I've always expected, like, shoujo to be very, like, prim and proper, and very, um, not violent, and oh. not bloody, and Mars and Karakana are surprisingly disturbing. Wow. Mar yeah, that, Mars that's usually not, yeah. Yeah, that's Mars usually, like, also, the shoujo. It's because yeah. that stuff doesn't get adapted. Like, because shoujo already, I feel like, gets less adapted in a lot of other genres into anime. And like what they do pick is generally stuff they can show to kids. Yeah, so it's like, like the yeah, it's the regular show to really see. I don't want to say like generic, but it's a lot of it is. Like yeah. the more you dig into the genre, I feel like the more you realize, yeah, no, there's like some pretty messed up stuff. Yeah, there's some standouts. It's the same as you get with Shonen or Science. Well, it's also Karakano actually was an anime. But That's I think, true, but it but cut off. Though. Yeah, they yeah. cut off before it got, like, and depressing. did you know, actually, the, because uh, it's, uh, Hideaki Anno is the one who directed the anime. Yeah. Because he's a big fan of manga, and um, the writer of the, the, uh, the manga apparently hates the anime, like, a lot. Because yeah. basically she said that he completely, like, destroyed the tone. I don't know, because it was too wacky, I think. So I haven't seen the anime, but... One thing I will say about the manga is the manga is basically the first half is like everything's kind of going well until and then the second half is, you know, the plane is falling, the plane is falling. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> Sounds so cool. I feel like I feel like when you only have 13 episodes to adapt a 21 volume like well, work, they, didn't, they didn't adapt all of it. That, well, that's what I'm saying. Is like they they, they only the, did the first half. I'm yeah, so sure, basically right? like the the cutesy part. Yeah, they feel like I'm pretty sure they only did the cutesy part and kind of skipped over a lot of the more depressing things. Although I don't really know because I haven't watched any of them. Probably won't either. But I was surprised because Mars is like even more depressing than Karakana. Granted, it doesn't have an anime adaptation. True. I, it probably I think it might one day. I don't think so. Banana Fish just got announced. Do you know what Banana Fish is? Anyone? No. Nope. <laughs> nope, that's my point. But I'm interested with Par the name. Parasite. Uh, Parasite got it. Okay, it's it. actually kind of similar to Parasite in the fact that you wouldn't expect it to be, but it was. But the thing about Banana Fish is basically, um, it's basically Yaoi from like the 80s, I think. Oh, wow. No, so no, like no, you no, would no, not no. expect that to get adapted. Uh, Jojo. And like it's cool. also like it's not like... But is, oh, jo is Jojo Yaoi? No, no, I'm saying like, like no, I'm saying like Watch Jojo, it. Jojo and fictions. Parasite got adapted after like decades. True. I feel like Banana Fish is also like really, you really wouldn't expect it. Is it's it like, Jojo? It's well, it's I, Yaoi, so well, it's not really. It's Shonen Eye is like a more accurate term, but like I just Yaoi, so okay. yeah. yeah, basically. <laughs> but like, it's not even like it's not like apparently like it's really really good. Like I think it's it was in the Sign In magazine and. Uh, so I don't even think it's like specifically made for women. It just it just has lots of like um, male male elements. <laughs> right. Well, like, yeah, it's getting adapted, so that's cool. That's cool. So do we? All right, I think now moving into the spooky category. So this is like pretty broad. So I think we'll just kind of start off with. Uh, so what are you guys like favorite horror, anime, or even cartoon like moments that you've had? Um, my my favorite it's not really horror but like spooky halloween is just soul eater just because it's got like it's just got the aesthetic of halloween going through it and it's it's never scary or creepy it, well it's a little creepy at times but like it's never trying to scare you it's trying to have fun with like the the halloween aesthetic and like skulls everywhere pumpkins everywhere black cats 
witches, demons, vampires, everything. And it's just cool. And it's just a well-written show. And like the fact that it has such a cool atmosphere and setting, I think really enhances it and gives it a sense of style that otherwise the show might feel a little mm-hmm. generic. But the fact that it's got all this cool atmosphere and everything going for it just gives it a really interesting sense of style that just boosts the show as a whole for me. Yeah, I actually, like, that's actually true. I never really thought about what differentiated, like, Soul Eater from a lot of, like, Shonen. But I feel like that is, like, a pretty big point. Is that, like, all I, I feel like the whole, like, kind of Halloween-y vibe really does, like, add a lot to it. Otherwise, it'd be fairy tale. It's, it's, yeah, it's, like, it's basically just, like, fairy tale, but they're in Halloween town. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's cool. Uh, so one of my personal favorite horrors, and this is, like, not necessarily like um, Halloween, but I, I really am a fan of Mononoke, which, for those of you who don't, who don't know, it's basically just, like, a series of it's very um what's the right word uh it doesn't have a continuous story episodic um, episodic thank you and it's basically just a couple of japanese traditional horror stories but i feel like that unlike a lot of things like did not make me sleep well at night like there (laughs) is i mean it's not necessarily spook scares but it's more like very uncomfortable creepy stuff going on where that kind of makes your skin crawl and i think because like there's just this like i think a good example is like it has a very weird style especially the first episode because i feel like it's kind of hard to get into because they're just like frames where the main they'll, they'll just be like centered on the main character and like nothing is happening and then he just blinks and you're just like, <laughs> and you're just like so it's like kind of very artsy in a way but i think it does a really good job of being like like kind of creepy feel i, mean, I feel that definitely i did watch mononoke even though i don't like it as you but as much as you but it's it's fucking creepy as shit like yeah i, I just think back to and all i think of was like that was an uncomfortable experience so i, I guess they got the I, one got, thing i will say is like part of the reason i like it so much it's not necessarily that because like of the show content and that making me uncomfortable but i'm a history major it's actually like very historically active oh, which yeah. is like really kind of cool to see like in anime like it, it seems like they really like i feel like like they make you like i feel like it immerses you in the world that they're in pretty accurately which is pretty cool in my opinion are you are you, are you japanese now <laughs> <laughs> i am too weeaboo for you <laughs> I mean, so we're talking about like just spooky, scary stuff. I feel I feel like the most disturbing thing I've ever read. Uh oh. Yeah, because like it, it, well, this is manga, but it has had an anime adaption. Is probably Devil Man, mm. which. Yeah. Yep. Like movie night. Yeah, I'm excited, but. Uh, weekend meeting. Night. Oh yeah, weekend, weekend meeting. meeting. Night. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> what's a Devil movie Man. night? Ooh. But basically, Devil Man's. It's kind of hard to explain. It's a manga from I believe late seventies. Yeah. By Gona Guy, the master of too many things to even count, but it's just disturbing. But it, there's a lot more to it than just being disturbing. But I feel like it's one of the first that, like, if you're into kind of like exploitation films from like 70s, 80s, like that kind of style, I feel like you'll get a lot of that out of Devil Man. It's basically just about this kid that turns into a devil, which basically there's devils that are attacking the earth. In order to fight the devils, he himself has to become the devil, and he slowly goes insane. Which, that's a simple concept, but he just takes it to the ultimate extreme, I feel. Like, if you read it, it basically goes from, like, a simple story of just, like, almost shonen at times, him fighting demons, to, like, end of Evangelion levels, if you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> it, it gets pretty intense and pretty jarring. Does but, the um, OVAs have, like, the same, similar type of intensity? Sadly, almost, because the thing is, there, there's two Wait, of them. sadly? I, no, because they don't. Sadly, they don't have as much. I feel because oh, okay. they don't. They, there's two of them, and they only adapt the first two out of the five volumes, which I think some that's some of the best material, but it's also missing the ending, which I think is like mm-hmm. it's one of the best endings in manga, in my opinion. I, I, it's basically end of Evangelion. Which, 
Twitch. No, no. Have you seen anyone? Nope. No. Nope. I have. Oh yeah, there. At least someone finally yep. has seen it, so they know yep. what I mean. It is. It's you just say, you just ask yourself, what is going on? What am I watching the whole time? Yeah. It is all kinds of weird and just strange things happening. Okay, so for my thing, uh, it's actually a game that, that came out recently. Has anybody heard of Doki Doki Literature yes. Club? Yes. Yep. Oh, so... <laughs> what is that? All right, all I know is wait, that... Wait, who, wait, who here has played it? Or has, knows what happens? So, I don't know what happens. I, I, I don't know what happens, or I don't... I don't know what... I don't know what happens, or what, like, anything that goes on with it. All I know is that Rob tried to get me to play it. Hey, it was Nick, too. He said it first. It's just a fun visual novel. I don't know if I want to play it then. <laughs> and I just looked that up. It was a little bit horrifying. But yeah. 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 No, like, it's, like, yeah, it's not what you expect at first. My friend showed it to me. Uh, he didn't show me the full game, but he showed me someone playing it. And it was, I was like, why? Because he, he doesn't watch anime. I was just like, why are you showing me this? And then I figured out why he started showing me it. Yeah, it's really messed up. Not going to lie. That kind of creeped me out of it. Yeah, because I for those like for my understanding is like it's basically just about a literature club. Yeah. In like high school. Yeah. And then it just goes like hor- horribly wrong somewhere. I don't yeah. know where. I don't know where, but I mean, I feel like it's because I feel like the game is meant to be played without the pretense of you knowing it's hard. But the issue is you go to the Steam page and it's like you gotta be 18 and older to play this. And you're like, well, yeah, they I give know you warnings bad. like if you're depressed or like if you have. It, it, oh, yeah. Wait, like, is it free? Yeah, it's free. Yeah, it's, oh, free. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. I got it, guys. I was actually, yeah. Yeah, cause... definitely. I, yeah, that's why I don't wanna say much because you, you haven't played it, but. Yeah. Yeah. It... I just wanna say, good point about the warning though, because my roommate, I have not played it, but my roommate has behind me and it gave him a legitimate panic attack, like a bad panic attack. Like, to be fair, it was for a personal reason, but on one hand, I'm like, Wow, that's that's bad. But then I'm like, that's an impressively that's an impressive game. <laughs> <laughs> so so wait, so why is it so scary? I don't want to. Say, I don't is want to it, say, is it spoilers? Is it violent? Just is play it. it. Just it's play psychological. It when you I'll can. just say that it's a, it's more psychological in, term, in terms of hard. What's Ooh. scary about it? And it is free to play on Steam. Yeah, yeah um, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should be. <laughs> well, let's call them up. <laughs> Yeah, it was actually the game itself was pretty creative. It was more like game design, like so stuff you've that actually played some of it. Yeah, I played it I, after I saw that. I wanted to play it, and it was even more interesting playing it myself than like just seeing the stuff happen. How many hours is it? So if you really want to breeze by the earlier part of the game, you can probably knock it out two, three hours. Ooh, if uh, you read through everything, six. Okay, so it's actually rather short. Yeah, in like terms of design, 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 yeah, yeah. It'll t- it was a lot longer than I thought. I didn't think it was going to be as long, but yeah, they really set up everything. Nice. Well, someone's not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh, God. So, um, another topic that I wanted to kind of talk about is one thing that's kind of interesting about Halloween and also Christmas, too, but, like, for, like, holiday specials, what are your, some of your guys' takes on holiday specials? Holiday specials in, for instance, American cartoons, there's plenty of examples, but also in anime, because there are a few examples of that, and what, what are the differences? Because, for instance, if, if you want me to start, like, I guess to start off, something I've noticed is I feel like, ja- like, whenever, like, um, whenever an anime has kind of a spooky slash Halloween themed episode, I feel like it's usually kind of subpar or not as good as the other material within that show i think a good example is like um samurai champloo or and cowboy bebop because they both have they both have like halloween slash spooky themed episodes that are just in my opinion not as good as the rest but then when you think about like the billy and mandy halloween yeah. specials you're like these are some of the best like like American cartoons I've seen, like I love it. Those were honestly the two least, and like I didn't expect those titles to be like having Halloween related episodes. I, yep. all. I also I think, think that well. those are the best episodes in Cowboy Bebop. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And wait, and Cowboy, so in Cowboy, so in Cowboy Bebop, the episode is the one where essentially 
I mean, I guess it's kind of a spoiler, but spoiler, the, the, the fridge just gets moldy and the monster kind of... I, oh, is that what happens. you think? I mean, yeah. I don't know. That wasn't what I was thinking of, but, like, I, no, also, I, think that's, I also think it's one so that's of my not, favorites, that's, actually. That is the... So, like, the two... So, the Halloween ones, I'm pretty sure, are both, like, around the mid-mark. Oh, yeah, both so it's like the Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Shampoo. For Samurai Shampoo, it's the one where they're, like stuck in this society of zombies or something <laughs> and then like i like I, a meteor just falls and like nothing's explained at all and then like the whole show is almost just reset after that i feel like the other thing that's important to mention is just how different of a like basically a holiday halloween is in america versus japan because like they, they don't care like it's it's not like a big thing like here it's a big thing because you know trick-or-treating is a thing they, they don't just flat out don't do that in japan it's more just like I don't even know. It's kind of like a westernized holiday that they're trying to, that they somewhat are trying to bring over, but not really. Like, it's, you kind of know what I'm saying? But well, Halloween is so good. <laughs> I, I love Halloween too, but like the point is when you see Halloween episodes in, in like Japanese media, I feel like that's more so like they're just, because it's not the full Halloween as we see it, their version of Halloween, just kind of like small aspects of what we consider grabbed into there is more or less just it's spooky and that's about it. Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty valid point because. Like, for instance, like, I feel like in Halloween specials, I feel like you can generally see, like, a lot of effort being put into them, at least in, like, the West and, like, United States. I'm not sure. Do you guys know if uh, Clone High? I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if Clone High they, had some Halloween they ones. Did. They didn't? No. All right, I'm wrong about that. It only aired <laughs> for, like, 12 episodes, True. and I think it was the yeah. spring or something. Like, it wasn't. Uh, okay. I think the best Halloween special, the the best special ever, dash recurring special, has to be The yeah. Simpsons Trios of Horror. Like, every year there's a new one, and every year, even the most recent ones, even, you know, The Decline of the Simpsons, whatever, it's still the best episode every season. Like, there's so much thought put into them. They're so different from the regular Simpsons, but they still keep the same funny jokes. They're violent. They're gruesome, but they're just fun. <laughs> like so, I I don't think I've ever seen a single really? one. Yeah, really? wow. Yeah, oh. but if you do, like, I've heard of yeah. them. Yeah, I've heard of them. I haven't seen them yet. Yeah. Jeez, uh, yeah, the Simpsons surprising. is one of my favorite things ever. So like, I get so excited every year when the new Trans Park comes on. I watched it this Sunday. Like, I I stopped watching The Simpsons just because like lack of time or. Desire, <laughs> yeah. It's, like I still think it's all right just to sit back and wa- watch every once in a while. But now that I'm so busy, I like don't watch it. But I'm like Trios of Horror. I gotta make time to watch that. Like I think, I'm trying to think of my favorite Trios of Horror. Probably. So have you seen every Trios of Horror? I've seen most of them. How many are there? There's, there's like one per season. Right? Yeah, well, except for the first season. Right. So there's like 28 at this point. Wow. Yeah, I think my favorite is probably I think it's from season six. I think it's Trios of Horror five. There's a, they do a parody of The Shining. They do this weird time travel story with different dimensions. And then there's a story where uh, the teachers at the elementary school start eating the oh, kids. Oh, no, I remember oh, that one. And, yeah. and it's like, I think it's one of my favorites because I just watched it so many times. And there's really funny recurring jokes that follow through each mini episode. Like in every single part, we... Um, uh, groundskeeper Willie gets struck in the back with an axe, <laughs> and it's just really funny every time. It's just so unexpected. Um, I think also one of my favorites is they did a parody of the the most dangerous game or whatever it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where so Mr. Burns just starts shooting everyone. <laughs> it's, it's just funny. <laughs> like, I feel like the other important thing you know about Trials of Horror, which was interesting because like I remember it mostly as a kid, is like. Despite being The Simpsons and a comedy, they were still pretty horrifying. They times. were violent. like, yeah, and they that's were what violent. I like. <laughs> I, yeah, like I just remember a kid, like I couldn't watch some of them because they were they were legitimately like disturbing and like which is cool. Like, yeah, they're great. disturbing, but like the characters still act the same, which is really funny. Like there's this one where everyone becomes a zombie, and Homer's trying to like get into his car, and he he shoots uh, zombie Flanders. And he's and Bart's like, oh, good job, you shot zombie Flanders. He's like, wait, Flanders was a zombie? <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> so, um, one thing that I feel like I've noticed, and this is go, this is kind of going back into like the anime realm, is that I feel like, at least in granted, this is actually more of a person. People, 
opinion, what do you think about horror in anime versus horror in manga? Because something that I've and that I've kind of I think perceived is that I feel like horror and manga I feel like is a lot like done a lot better in my opinion than horror and anime. But what do you guys think about that? I mean, you get the the detail more in manga. Like you. You can like just stare at something and you have more time to like work on like a single page and make it really intricate whereas in anime everything's always moving and it's hard to get like a beautiful one shot that's horrifying if that makes sense no that makes a lot of sense to me because like i feel because like as i've read a fair amount of horror manga and i feel like the thing i noticed is what really sets them apart is that the really good horror manga are not going to get adapted to anime because they're too gruesome. Because a lot of like a lot of the best Japanese horror, a lot of the classic stuff, tends to be um, a lot of body horror. So a lot of it's really based on image and what you see, and just like they can't adapt a lot of it because it's just too much. Like Frank and Fran, I think is one of the most horrifying things I've ever read in my life. And it, I desperately want anime to be made and it's popular, but they can't do it because there's no way they could even air it like late night. Like it's just that bad. Damn. Which is why you de- tend to get like stuff like I know there was a Gyo, the Junji Ito manga that got a movie. So generally um, they tend to get sh- yeah. So time. generally that stuff gets. Wait, that was Junji Ito. Yeah, I heard it was awful. Yeah, it's an awful movie, but <laughs> nice. that's not Junji Ito's fault. They messed it up. That's why. So like I feel like other things because like the stuff that tends to get anime adaptions is like let me let me think like. Another Higurashi. Higurashi. Higurashi is actually one of the better ones, but like a lot of them are just lame. Like wait, shit. was Higurashi a manga? I thought it was a visual one. novel. Which that, yeah. I feel like that's another thing to note is I think almost any medium's anime it messes up because I think Higurashi the, the anime is fun to watch. It's really violent and gruesome and entertaining. But I read I played the game. I was expecting it to just be like kind of entertaining pulp par. No, it, but like it actually it highly disturbed me because it, it was such like a deeply in the, um, psychological game that I wasn't expecting. So, I feel like by adapting, so when you take a lot of these things and you try to put it on anime, it just completely loses that element, because especially a visual novel, yeah. which is supposed to be first person, like, you, know, you really don't feel at all Higurashi, because Higurashi, like, that made me parent, like, some of those paranoid I'd been in my life playing that game, and, like, I didn't feel that at all in the anime. So, I feel like, I actually, I think, kind of disagree with the whole medium argument, and uh, the, and the, I will use, like, an American reference, like, I think the movie The Shining a lot of people would say it's just as scary, if not more scary, than the book. Slash more, and I feel like... I think that's for different reasons, though. Which is my argument. Yeah, I, I heard it more like they're written very differently. That's what that, I heard. I feel like that is true, but I, also, but I guess my argument would be that I feel like you could make a, I think, good horror anime, but I feel like, because I feel like the manga in some ways is also generally like a smaller pool than most other well it's not super small but i feel like it's not it's no like not like shoujo or shonen it's more based on short stories i feel okay so it's like since basically it's all short stories i feel like that's that's a smaller pool i can also adapt from so i think you are right because like junji ito for example like he has some longer works but like if you're going to adapt from him almost everything he does and most most some of the most famous stuff is like one two volumes so that's only you can only do that in a movie. I mean, so like I I agree, but I feel like for instance Uzumaki slash Spiral yeah, that's could be, be made. Are they making a, it in anime? Are they? Yeah, they, they announced be. they're making uh, Junji Ito stuff into they're, anime. Yeah, but that's not Uzumaki. It's a short story collection. Oh, I just thought it was like random ones. They're gonna. Yeah, make. but they couldn't uh, do Uzumaki. It was too long. Uh, but I feel like having an Uzumaki anime that's potentially like twenty four episodes. I feel like. I actually think would have the potential of being good, although I do agree in some sense like that. Like I have some images like that are kind of like burned into my mind <laughs> because of that manga. I'm just reading it and being like, my life is ruined. And you can also question: Can that stuff be put on TV? Because like, because like the thing is, a lot of that stuff is censored. Like just look at JoJo. I know well, I guess JoJo is more of an earlier time slot, but even a lot of later time slot stuff, which is most anime, like. Even still, they have to censor it. Like Terraformers, I think that's the uh, best example. Terraformers was, was a horror full of, It was a really horror uh, show. Yeah. It, it was literally just black dots put over like dead people. It so, was like, awful. yeah. Bad if you it watch was, the uncensored version, it's an alright show. It's just, but, like, yeah, the point is, like, get the way for the Blu ray. So, I feel yeah. like more reason why you can't. Crunchyroll has it uncensored now. Oh, that's good. Yeah. They usually don't do that. 
they, they got the they got both versions thank god <laughs> That's why we gotta destroy the, the system, man. Destroy <laughs> the censoring. Yeah, the random white yeah. bars. Yeah. Yeah. Jo JoJo gets really censored, and it's really annoying. It's because JoJo violent. can be really violent. Yeah. Also, they just censored the smoking, too, which is pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, silly. <laughs> so, I, get, I mean, you do have a point there that, like, censorship could be have a prop. But, like, I guess, yeah, I get... But I mean, granted, I don't know the censorship rules, but do you think some of this, I guess stuff probably would get censored, even if it's not necessarily gory per se? Because I feel like what makes viral scary isn't necessarily like blood and guts everywhere, but like kind of like I feel like just more like this dude's slowly going insane. Yeah. And some, you know what I mean? I feel like, yeah, that's true. Definitely they could adapt stuff like that. Like I feel like a good example that's Tokyo Ghoul, you really yeah. gonna think of one. What do you mean, ugh? I hate, I hate Tokyo. Tokyo Ghoul is really good. All right, can I just say that, like, season one was good, by, but season two definitely ruined it. Season so one was all right. Read the manga. Don't be, yeah. don't be uh, secondary. Uh, <laughs> too, too edgy. Well, they're coming out with a third season. Um, yeah. It's official they now. Too. Tokyo Ghoul Re. Are they, make, are they just... They can they, the are they forgetting about the second season? I hope they do. I don't know. No I, think, I, think it, I think it's continuing off. I, I think so, read too. into it, but I would imagine it would continue off of season. There's like oh. very little known about it right now. Yeah, they just said that they're making it. And there's like one picture. Yeah, because the manga's 100% different. Like, manga basically, it's, you'd probably like the manga, Craig. Cause no, just, I heard it's too edgy. No, you'd like it because you know what it does? It turns into a generic shonen and then gets bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I'm I mean, insulting my taste. <laughs> I mean, if you like fairy tale. <laughs> I like fairy tale because I know what I'm getting into. But like I, and fairy tale is I don't but love, now you know what you're going into it's yeah like, you know, but like, fairy tale is very this is what you know you, like this is what you expect and this is what you're gonna get <laughs> even like towards the end of fairy tale like the last really long arc just like is disgusting like it just got so yeah. bad because it was fun to show in and then it became edgy shown in I'm like this is bullshit I kind of like edgy shown in Oh so, god. Because I mean you also like Naruto and going through Naruto, I was surprised I like of how edgy Naruto is. Like Naruto I mean, does get mad it's edgy. super edgy, but that's kinda like what makes it appealing. I well, feel like that's what yeah. we're missing. I don't know. Edge is important. Nah, you, you gotta get the edgy show, Joe. That is the edgy. true quality. Diabolic lovers. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> oh god. But you know it's true. You know it's the best horror movie of all time? Space Jam. <laughs> I was about to say the, <laughs> the live action adaptation of death note, death note. oh, oh god. It's so good. we've already talked about that <laughs> we don't need that was, that, yeah if, if you want to hear, it had hear some about cool that. shots of like I final think, destination murder i actually think the original death note like was pretty good at horror like i feel yeah. like yeah it, it didn't go over the top well maybe not horror but like i feel like it was creepy yeah because yeah. it, it didn't try to be something that it wasn't like death note is not a horror show you don't watch it for like little the deaths itself because essentially it, most of the deaths were heart attacks and yeah. it was only really violent when like needed it to be violent and for the most part and the movie just kind of went overboard it was the movie tried to be horror when it initially wasn't supposed to be so it kind of lost its focus yeah yeah, yeah that's true that's like yeah, a good point that's a good point Add that on to edit, cut, edit, put on the <laughs> episode one of the podcast. <laughs> Nothing changed. I feel another good point about anime horror in general is like, it's not talking about perfect blue because everyone always brings a perfect blue when I say this, but I honestly don't think there's any legitimately scary um like anime, like things that could yeah. be comparable to like actual like horror movies in america it's just not scary it just it's either edgy or do you think that's because it's cartoons i, think, I don't that, that probably might be it because i think it's when you're seeing an actual real person uh in 3d experiencing like pain or like dying it's, it's you disturbing. feel it a little bit more than 2d like as far yeah. as horror is concerned yeah i agree with that definitely yeah i always leave the sense of what type of horror because I feel like the thing is they they do try to do that a lot in anime, a lot of like grot grotesque, grotesque like body horror, like which is what they're known for. Yeah, Parasite I, I love was Parasite. Cool. I like the Parasite was uncensored. That was also a big yeah. Uh, it was it's somewhat censored. Yeah, but it was Parasite was cool and was body horror and was kind of scary. At See, the thing is, I feel like even still, it's not like it's just more like you're like that's gross rather yeah. than I'm actively afraid. Yeah, which I feel like is why animation kind of even though Japan's I feel like known for body horror. 
they probably should start with anime. They should probably start going to psychological because that's really what works a lot better in that medium. Mm-hmm. I mean, one thing I I mean, you kind of said Perfect Blue is the exception. I feel like Perfect Blue doesn't really scare you. I feel like it just makes you mad and comfortable. Oh, really? I mean, I have people tell me that they, they get actually scared of them, but that's because I, I, everyone, like, I've said this to a couple people, and they always tell me Perfect Blue is the example of one that actually scares them, but I would not have seen it. Perfect I mean, Blue like, also has a multi million dollar budget true. For, <laughs> for like a two hour movie. So. Really? I mean, what? It's a movie. I don't know how long it is. Uh, no, I'm just surprised that has a multi million dollar. Well, budget, I assume well, most it's movies gotta. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, that's I'm true. Well, I was like, what movies don't have a multi million dollar? But, but I mean, the, the, I wouldn't really call it horror because it's kind of like paprika. It's like, is paprika really horror? Not at all, yeah. So, like, it ca- does kind of make you scared because, like, you don't. I guess, it, I guess now that I think about it, you might be able to. Yeah, Perfect Blue had about. Uh, oh, no, it was only $25,000. What the? What? what? Really? Yo, guys, let's pull our money together and make an. <laughs> That's like, well, it was it was yeah. one year here. It yeah. was it was three million yen. I mean, you also take into account wow. that, that that's amazing to me, but also it is true that Japanese production prices are like significantly lower than ours. Yeah. It was 1997, so uh, still inflation. <laughs> still, <laughs> still I got, wait, I want to look up like I want to look up like Princess Mononoke. I know that was mad. That's the most expensive. Yeah, well, it? but it's like I know it was around the same. It was 1997, time. so I think a Japanese anime. Movie? That budget was 23.5 million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> and you have wait, dollars. more than uh, Kimi no Nawa. Well, can we just can we not all that expensive? I don't time to find to out. <laughs> I thought like looking at it, I thought like it looks really expensive. Well, I mean, I it's probably it's cheaper to do that kind of stuff. I, yeah, nowadays. I also think honestly, I would say um, Mononoke looks better. No budget. Um, I, I'm budget pretty smaller. sure it's not hasn't been a Mononoke yet though. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, if you didn't, I'm kind of surprised that Mononoke has the most. Biggest budget, but I feel have like because it took it? years to make. I mean, yeah, have you watched it? It's yeah, like it's, it looks so. Look good. at some of the scenes, and you think to your brain, "How did they even animate that?" Like it's it's like it's Just scary. disgusting. Yeah. yeah. So uh, but off of that tangent, yes. <laughs> people assume like ten million dollars. Oh, which is a lot. Oh, I have another actually point to make about yeah. our just just the fact that like. Because a, a lot of the censoring, like, that didn't apply in the 80s and 70s and 90s. And people, modern anime fans, tend to ignore that period. If you go into that period of OVAs, you're, you're going to find the most disturbing stuff. Like, Devilman's a good example. There's Devilman OVA. Hatch it's pretty the horrifying. There's a Violent Jack OVA. I mean, OVA. I think the original anime of Berserk is yeah. actually pretty horrifying. I was actually looking up most violent anime of all time recently, just because, I don't know. And uh, there, Berserk was on there. It's pretty violent. Yeah, but I mean, stacked. it's not, I feel like it's violent, but like, I was legitimately horrified. Try watching violent. I just gotta say, violence, Jack. Like, that's the that's the worst thing you could ever watch. Like, it's not good, but like, if you want something, if for some reason you want to watch something and torture yourself, watch violence, Jack, because it's just so outwardly hard to watch and disgusting and awful. I almost. Is it kind of like technologized where it's like, yeah, we're no, not, no. It's, it's, it's all just, um, it's all just like I don't want to describe some of the stuff because it's pretty bad, but like it's just lots of like very extreme violence, like creative violence, a bit, a bit too creative. So <laughs> kind of like it's actually the sequel to the Devil Man in a sense. So it, is it somewhat similar to like Helsing Ultimate, but even worse? I say it's much worse than Helsing Ultimate. Like it, it's also pretty immoral, which I feel like that's the other thing about Violence Jack that's important is like I mean it's called Violence Jack. Like what, what do you think? But like <laughs> I mean Helsing Ultimate. I feel like there's some parts in it that are I mean badass. I mean <laughs> I feel like immortal, yeah. I feel like there's yeah, yeah, but I feel like it's still on your feeling like, oh that's awesome. And violence Jack, you're like you feel actively sick. I don't know, I feel it's kinda of hard to explain about watching How it. How many episodes is it? it? Uh it, there's an OVA. It's like there's like three, I think, OVAs. Is it a manga mostly? It's yeah, it's mostly a manga. It's, it's really long manga, I think. Because it's it's a basically an alternate sequel to Devil Man. Written by Gona Guy, which I said also a guy famously known for like he's he's the godfather of Echi, like horror, like he's such a weirdo. He's <laughs> Mecca, like yeah, people don't know Gona Guy, and he's like the raddest dude. And, Wait, what what mecha uh, like, Mazinger. Mazinger? Uh, yeah. What is Mazinger? It's like one of the original like uh, mecha stuff anime from yeah. the seventies that really popularized and modernized oh, the genre. Cutie the honey? Gundam. Yeah, that's why what? he made Echi. He made cutie honey. 
Dang. Like, he, you'll see a lot of stuff. People like, he made Devil Man. He oh, made Bonish, get, get a Robo. Yeah, get a Robo. Yeah, get a Robo and a Zinger. Like, both of those. Wild. Like, yeah, no one knows Gunna Guy, but, like, he's a legend. And they're finally adapting his stuff into English, so that's mm. good. Nah, you just gotta learn the language of the anime. <laughs> yeah, that's Robot good. Girl Z. Because <laughs> oh, I definitely man. know Japanese, right, guys? Some of them are so much his. Like, his actual... Because, like, those are just based off of his stuff. But, yeah, I feel like you have a good point that, on um, like... This is kind of a lot of backtracking, but that I feel like some of like like Simpsons slash kid cartoon Halloween specials are almost like scarier than like a lot of almost horror anime, if that makes sense. Or you know what I mean? Because I feel like a lot of horror anime slash that genre is kind of just blood and guts. Where yeah, like, and then the kid stuff, stuff is yeah, unexpected. Where the kid stuff is like unexpectedly like creepy as like all hell and you're just like oh god when they have just like weird non-canon endings that are just like disturbing <laughs> like that's what i really die. liked about grim adventures of billy and mandy as a kid like it just got weird and gross <laughs> and you're just like it's oh, just disturbing god. yeah like and i feel like even when you watch i feel like it's, it's funny because like even when you watch it as an adult it's not like it gets less disturbing if anything it gets more disturbing because you know more about what's going on yeah here. Like, i definitely feel that oh god because I feel like as a kid, sometimes you're just like, ah, oh, it's not that bad. And then you watch it as a doll, and you're like, oh, my God. My, my personal favorite creepy kid show, uh, Mr. Meaty. Oh, God, Mr. Right. Meaty? That show, the puppet show, right? Yeah. It was about these, like, puppets, and they worked at, like, a, a, like a Burger King, McDonald's type place in a mall. And the designs were just really messed up, and it just looked ugly, and it was just weird as fuck. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I just remember something about them eating human flesh. I'm not sure if I had. I don't think so. I don't know. I think someone like got their hands stuck in one. There was like a zombie episode. I that might be it. I don't know. I just remember like not good memories as a kid. It was just badly written. It was just weird. Yeah. <laughs> so before uh, we uh, like we end the podcast, do you, do any of you guys want some like concluding thoughts? Slash themes. Oh, sisters, all you need is the greatest anime of the season. Oh, the greatest actually, horror anime. Actually, wait, there's something that I found out. I don't know if you guys know it, but uh, Kimi no Nao is getting a live action. Yeah. yeah. All right. And, and wait, 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 yeah, wait, wait. Wait. All right. I, I need to say this. I need to say this. <laughs> all right. This. So, during the first podcast, I I made the hypothetical. Yeah, of, I was listening to that. Of what if. Your name got a live action adaptation. And then that, Two hours later, yeah. it was announced. This is all that really literally, your, literally your the night name of. got. Well, it was announced that uh, your name was going to be um, right. highly directed slash produced by JJ Abrams. Yeah, uh, I saw like this was the yeah. night of. Recording. Yeah, this was the night. Two hours later, I would text her and I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" So yeah. I am a prophet. <laughs> my new hypothetical. The anime prophet. Yeah. What other predictions you got for us, Ben? All right. So this is my next hypothetical. Within the next fifteen years, <laughs> not as good. Berserk will be adapted right. <laughs> oh, no, within the next. Fi- All right. So I think that considering that, um, kind of going back to the horror, <laughs> That's like, never happening. Going, going that. back to the horror <laughs> thing, I think that. You, spirals will eventually get an anime adaptation. That sounds reasonable. Because, like, they're adapting his other stuff, and if that works out, they'll be like, let's adapt this. Yeah. So, so wait two sure. hours <laughs> and two see hours. what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> anything else? I don't think so. Junior Tyson is better fate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Except I, they're made for completely different reasons than yeah, audiences. No, I, definitely. <laughs> One concluding thought, and this, and this I think will actually be our concluding thought, is that get in there on the fall season because, like, it is surprisingly no good yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 like, yeah no there's, a there's a lot. There's a lot. Wait, let me, let me just mention some of the stuff that, like, we didn't talk about. So, so MMO I was gonna say that show. there's the Kino's Journey yeah. remake. So Kino's Journey remake, I actually don't think is that good, but we won't oh. get into that. Um, um, there's Inu- Inuyashiki is there's apparently Food supposed Wars. to be really good. Yeah, Food Wars, Pingu in the City. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm still living good, but yeah, I mean Kino's Journey. Anime Guitar is good. Everybody knows it. 
Um, I don't know. I don't know what it's good. There's the Ma, there's the Negima sequel. Oh yeah, Yuki, Yuki Holder. Yuki Holder. There's season two of Mark comes in like a lion. DS era. Oh wait, that's, yeah, that's bad. Don't yeah, watch that. Just because is apparently good. Yeah, I, I actually I is you it watching good? it? I haven't watched it. Yet. I don't know. It's um, mm. there's already some love triangles for me and whatnot, but it seems again it's like one of those shows where it could go somewhere, but not there. I feel like there's quite a few of those shows where yeah. it seems like it could be good, but you just don't know. They might take a wrong turn somewhere. Uh, but yeah, it's like pretty much slice of life romance. There's like some drama a bit here and there. It's not bad. Yeah. There's a, there's a new season of Gintama. <laughs> yeah, there are always that's, a new that's season of Gintama. Oh, oh, Evil or Live classic hey, show. That's bad. Yeah. Uh, there's Yuki Yuna. Oh, Urahara. I, I wanted to mention this before. It's really weird, but you should watch it. It's like cute girls in like a really cool art style. It's your Moe show. It makes no sense. <laughs> it's not even Moe, though. <laughs> it's just really weird. I hear they act like real human beings. Yeah, there. It's What's, interesting. Yeah, well, it's very strange. This? Wait, well, how does one act like a real human being? <laughs> I don't really. Know. I don't know. I've just seen one episode. Don't all girls they, just sit around they, cake and talk about like, I don't know, feelings? They, don't they, know. they, they used the phrase "fake news" in the first episode. In the first no. episode. That was really funny. So. Oh, no way. They're like, yo, there's aliens on TV. They're like, no, it's fake news. <laughs> wow. I'm like, damn, yo, Funimation adding Trump. <laughs> Oh. Yuki Yuna is also back if anyone ever watched that. Oh, Sengoku. Oh, Osumasu. oh yeah, Osumasu. Yeah, Osumasu. Osumasu. Yeah, Osumasu. Yeah, yeah. Aren't you really yeah. into Osumasu? I mean, I, I, I'm not the biggest fan. I say that comparing, considering it's actually like, because no one in America seems to care about Osumasu, but it's like huge in Japan. Like, it's one yeah. of the biggest things there. Girls, for some reason, love all the Osumasus. Like, they're buying merchandise, they're getting hats, they're getting leg, like, like the stock. Right. They're getting pan the Osumasu pants. Yeah, like the stock, right? I don't know. My point, my point is like I've seen pictures of people deck down Osumasu gear, like it's a big thing. And I understand why. Osumasu is one of the funniest comedies I think I've ever watched in anime. Like it's just so just I mean it's sometimes disturbing, but it just points it, it seems willing to go places the other shows won't go. So better than Midori fun. Days? <laughs> yes, a, a quite a bit better than Midori Days. I think, I think the last show I'm going to talk about is uh, the classic Two Car. <laughs> the about, classic Two about Car? Motorcycles, oh, side cars. Yeah. I, watch that. I, I actually really wanted to watch it because but I'm, I think I talked about I think I'm watching nine shows, so I haven't been able to add Two Cars. So. It's a made up sport, so... <laughs> Right. I think I think it's time to go. Yeah, all we've right. talked about the greatest. So, all right, so, all right. This is I guess the anime podcast signing off. Yeah, have a good one. Peace out, yo. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>